Hey, this is Mike. I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina at Sparks Toyota, and I'm joined Hi there. By Michael, with Michael, Michael Holmes. Holmes. And he's the go-to guy here in uh, at Sparks Toyota, and he, you've seen him in the custom Tundra videos and different truck videos yep. and custom vehicles. And we're going to take a, just a spin in the uh, 2020 Toyota Corolla in the, what was the trim? LE Corolla Hybrid. And that's the only trim? Only trim that's available right now. And there's no options. Um, from what they, I can see, as in building the vehicle online, there's no options. Uh, they're really designing this vehicle to provide you the maximum amount of value. The price point on this vehicle is $23,865, um, which is substantially cheaper than the Prius. Um, essentially, it's the idea of having a Corolla, that client or customer that's looking to get into a better fuel economy vehicle but does not feel comfortable enough to get into a Prius. Either they just don't like the lift back design or maybe it looks a little too futuristic for them. Um, but essentially, the engine and transmission that's in this car is directly out of the Prius. Um, so the fuel economy uh, is awesome. 53 miles to the gallon um, as an average fuel economy is amazing. Um, and it looks and feels just like a normal uh, 2020 Corolla. Um, so it's just, it's the benefit, it's the idea of that kind of transition where if you were to take the hybrid badges off this vehicle, which it's rumored that that may happen in the future, um, that you would never really know it. And once you start driving this vehicle, you get more comfortable with the idea of it being a hybrid. Um, it still goes forward, backwards, left and right, like I tell all my clients that are looking at a hybrid vehicle. You don't have to plug them in, you don't have to do anything outside of what normal driving characteristics of any car. Uh, it's lower on maintenance costs. Typically on hybrids, brakes last a lot longer. And I always ask people, you know, how many seat belts do you, or I'm sorry, how many belts do you think are in this vehicle? Um, and you know, they think of the engine, they think of all the, like the normal like drive belts or the uh, like secondary drive belts that they would have to replace, you know, at, at a certain mileage. But really there are no belts in a Prius engine and it's only seat belts that are in this whole vehicle. Um, wow, so there's no timing belt? There's there's all those things that you would normally accustom to having to replace as a maintenance item are not in any of the Prius models. So historically, the Prius has the lowest cost of ownership to a consumer. Um, and that's carried over to this vehicle. So like I said, the brakes are really used for the recharging process. Um, so they last a lot longer. So the transmission same thing as a everything everything's Prius in this okay okay yep. so um all right so I noticed the the uh, the engine's not running we're running off the battery here yeah and I will say EV mode in the top left hand corner there next to the radar ready mm -hmm. and that is to signify that we're actually in electric vehicle mode and I reset the trip information so we can get some information sure. there and keep an eye on where the energy is coming from absolutely and um, is the sport, it has a power, eco, and just a normal. Is right. the normal fast enough or do we need to put it on power? I would say let's start with normal. Okay. Um, most of the time I don't run it in power um, just so people can get a real full experience. I like the fact that the electronic parking brake engages and disengages by itself. Yeah, it's really, really a cool feature. You never have to worry about um, having to release the brake. It does it for you. And if you had to turn it on, you can. Just touch of a button. And the adjustable seat belts, they helped out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Watch out for random salespeople here. I forget that guy's name. Uh, I like to call him Gigantor. <laughs> yeah, he's huge. <laughs> He's pretty cool. I actually, um, at another dealership, he worked there and I did a mystery shop at that dealership and he was my salesperson. And um, <laughs> that was kind of interesting before I started working at that dealership. But it seems like a lot of people come here because it's such a, such a good dealership. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you're here because <laughs> you're, well, like you're easy, to, easy to work with. I've worked with a lot of larger corporate stores up in New York and, uh, you know, 
Patrick doesn't pay me to say this. This is just my own true feelings and opinion. Yeah, he is the best dealer principal. I've really? With. Yeah. I've been, this is my 20th year in the automotive industry. 20 years? Yeah. Wow. Started in 99. The apprentice program to be a technician. Okay, so now the engine just started. Actually, kick back. Kick so back off, because yeah. we're not going. I guess. It'll transition. We don't even have to worry about that, do we? So when, as we're coasting, it's showing the power going from the wheels to the battery. Mm. And as you apply the brake, it charges the battery. This is where the hybrid really helps out with stopping good traffic like this, I would assume. Any gas. Yeah. So if you were to put it in EV mode, mm -hmm. if you had like a relatively full battery, how far could you drive? They say it's about a quarter mile of straight distance up to 18 miles per, 18 miles per hour. Um, you can't, like you can't leave it in EV mode and go 50 miles an hour. It doesn't allow it. Now our Prius Prime is a different design and a little bit different technology where the Prime will go 22 miles up to 85 miles an hour. So you can just drive it normally? Yeah. And that's really designed for you to go to your, they did a survey and they said the average commute was within 22 miles. Mm -hmm. And with, this, with that survey, they designed the car to go 22 miles on a charge and when you get to work, you, the idea is that if it's an eco-friendly company, then you can charge while you're at work. So that's the plug-in part. Right. And the, the bigger plug, I think it was like the 220 outlets, you could charge it in two and a half hours. Okay, versus, so think, that'd be like five hours, I believe. So it would be fully charged before you go to lunch. Right, <laughs> right. Or if it was a regular outlet, you still have plenty of time. Most people work eight hours a day. So. Now how would, just this is just a random question on that. How would uh, oil changes work on something like that if you rarely use the engine? Is it just like timed a certain time. amount of time? Yeah, because the all oil uh, properties, even if they're a synthetic property, they still over time degrade. So they they break down. I mean, hmm. Truly, anything that's rubber over time will break down. You know, any type of you know material outside of metal. You know, which theoretically, if it's not rusted or something like that. See, I'm looking, I'm see, seeing this, um, seeing this meter constantly change and the whole time. You don't have to really think about it. Usually I don't drive with a meter up like this. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't even know if the engine's running really. Uh, it just starts and stops automatically. That was like a collision warning. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm looking at this I, <laughs> no, no, I'm watching, trust me, I'm watching the road. I just, I just glance at the screen, but I don't, I don't it's nice to know that I was just trying to get through the intersection before the light turned green so I was kind of hugging the car in front of me so if I get kind of close I've been on a couple test drives and the pre-collision system is activated where people are just so and it's normal I mean when you're driving by yourself most people are very aware but when you're trying to multitask or you're trying mm -hmm. to do multiple things at once uh, it really is nice to have a second set of eyes on the road yeah, that's one of the... And you just don't realize it, especially when you're car shopping. Mm -hmm. You're so focused on the vehicle and the options and everything else that's going through your head. Um, and then you take a test drive and most of the sales consultants will try for a couple reasons. But one of the reasons is we try to stay as quiet as possible so you can really focus on driving. Yeah. Because it's so easy to get distracted. I mean... Yeah, if you're in a day, different vehicle and all that exactly. stuff. Exactly. And I mean, let alone... If you have families that, you know, come in, husband and wife, um, you know, if they're with their girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever their spouse is, 
um, or if they bring kids with them, they're distracted and that's their normal life. And if you're able to show them that the vehicle is standard equipment with an, you know, a suite of extra safety equipment that's standard on all the Toyotas with the safety sense, and especially with this new 2.0 that has the lane tracing, and I don't know if you've even noticed, but in the top left-hand corner of the big screen, in front of the steering wheel there, it yeah. shows 55 miles an hour. Now, this vehicle doesn't have um, a navigation system that that's linked with to show you that. It use the camera. the camera. And it'll read and show you up to, th it'll read up to eight different traffic signs, and it'll put three on that screen at a time if it needs to. Hmm. And if you're going over the speed, it'll put a red border around it. So, I mean, it's just, it's, you know, where if you're in an area that you're not familiar with, you're on the highway, you know, there's different areas and different roads that they switch the speed all the time. You know, you're going through a certain, like, let's say it's a town and you don't see that it dropped it to 45 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. The nice thing is the car did and the car will let you know. Yeah. Yeah. I like the fact that it's actually a camera because yes. I noticed and some of them have the GPS system and they're not very accurate sometimes. Exactly. They could be changing the roads. It could be. That's the thing with GPS is that where it's really changing is now that with Apple CarPlay, you know, it's three different GPS systems you can use with that, but they're real time and active. Whereas, you know, as much as people truly like having the navigation system in there and being able to see it at all times, I, I understand that, but that information is at least a year old. Maybe think about it. If you're even if you're buying a 2020 model, if it, if it had a hard like drive or a CD base or anything that was already pre-written, mm -hmm. think about when it was written. Yeah, yeah. Think about when it actually made it in the vehicle, and then how much further back was it actually written? Even if you have the latest and greatest and everything, it's still something that's that was written possibly a year before. Yeah. Yeah, so you have your cell phone, which is updated all the time. Yeah. Um, does this particular one have Apple CarPlay? Yes. Okay, so you could just you could have that on the screen exactly. if you wanted to. Exactly. And what Toyota is actually doing to help people transition with that um, on some of our models, like um, let's say the RAV4 and the limited RAV4, navigation is standard. But there's actually a um, subscription base called um, Dynamic Navigation that has it hooked up to a cloud. And as you're driving, if there's a road that you're on that's not on the map, it'll research and find out what the road is and add it to your map. Hmm. And that happens on everybody who's in the vehicle, so it's going to be updated almost instantly. So it just it helps because, I mean, there's a lot of growth. Look at the Myrtle Beach area. It's turning the steering wheel for me a little bit there, correcting yeah. my... Yeah, when you go through this turn, it'll turn. So this one has the lane tracing. Yeah. And the... Uh, Any of the vehicles that have the uh, TSSB 2.0 has the lane tracing and the street sign recognition. I happen to notice that as soon as we pass the sign that says 65, it turned to 65. And you, So those lines, just to give an idea above that 65, the white lines are the lane departure alert notification, so that means it's reading the lines. That means it's active. The blue lines on the outside are the lane tracing uh, technology, which is letting you know that's active. So there's two separate systems. That's why you see a white line and the blue line. And then the three blue lines is the how much spacing we have between the vehicle in front of us and us. So when we get Let's say we catch up the car in front of us, let's say it starts decreasing on speed, let's say they go down to 50 miles an hour, eventually we'll catch up to them. And then when we catch up to them, it'll put us in tandem with them, and that's where the space, and there'll be a little car that'll pop up there. Now, what if they were to slam on the brakes? Does this apply brakes to slow yes. us? Okay. Oh, yeah. It'll bring it right to a stop. Okay, so it's an all speed yeah. radar system. Okay, good. Just think about right now as you're driving it, and somebody who's normally doing, uh, like my parents were going to be driving uh, from Florida, it's about a 10 hour drive. Think about how much driver's fatigue would be reduced by a vehicle that A, tells you what the speed zone is, mm -hmm. B, has radar crews, so you don't have to keep pushing the brake pedal or cancel, keep resuming, or any yeah. of that stuff. Um, and let alone, we'll keep them centered in the lane. Yeah, I'm not. 
not, I'm not, fit, my, 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 you know, typically if you wrist. Take, if you take your hands off the wheel, it'll do it for about 10 seconds until yeah. it means that there's no input from you. So I can, I'm just kind of holding on, but I'm not really, you know, pushing too hard and it's kind of just. Do it with your finger. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. So there's not much. I mean, just think about how much more that you don't have to be, you know, stressed with driving. You're an I-95. Yeah. You know, you're worried about what's the zone. Is it 65? Is Especially it over hours. Yes. Uh, as far as your hands. You're doing, let's say, five hours straight. You're mm -hmm. just sitting there. You just think about how many between the cameras being with the pre-collision system, the Doppler radar sending out. Like right now, we're catching up to that vehicle in front of us. Mm -hmm. You can see a little picture of the car. Yeah, it notice that there's a car. So it it, 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 it it actually picked it up. So now we're within so many feet. And it'll adjust it based on our speed. So the faster we go, the larger that gap will be because it wants to have you have a little bit more room. Now you can adjust the, the distance between you and that car. You have yeah. You that one right there. I got it the furthest distance. Yeah. Um, because it don't like to tailgate people if I can't if I, if I can't help it but I noticed the RPMs we're going you know well we're slowing down now uh, because of the vehicle in front of us but uh, it's going around a little bit over a thousand RPMs with the engine running right now yeah and uh, we're going pretty fast so I had the speed I had the the cruise control set at 68 we're at about 58 probably too slow for this road but we're gonna turn here in a second um, so even us going, and I noticed the RPMs just kind of vary depending on, you know, like we just went up that hill. Yeah. Um, but what I'm, I'm curious about to know more about the transmission and how it works. Well, see right now, both the engine and the electric motor, um, they're they're doing two different jobs. The engine is moving us down the road, and the electric motor is actually charging the battery as we speak. And it kind of, I noticed it has little arrows uh, going. Yeah. So it's pretty wild. It can do two things at once. Are you getting off? Again? Yeah, yeah. I'm just good. Yeah, this right here. This is the lane I need to go on right here. So it was letting me know that hey, you're going over all these lanes, <laughs> uh, and I didn't have the turn signal on. This is kind of a weird exit. What I, have, I can't wait to find out is that I have a lot of clients that do have the Prius and they always tell me that they're getting even better mileage than what is listed in. The mileage thing I'm kind of, I have mixed feelings on because have you, did you notice back in 2016 with the mileage readings? So between 15 and 16, the EPA with the mileage when, when they do the testing mm -hmm. to do the reports, a 2015 Camry and a 2016 Camry are the identical same car. Right. But the fuel economy was like two to three miles per gallon difference. Huh. They changed how they test the vehicles. So, anyways, I had... So, so there's like, a, is it standard for all vehicles yeah, or just all that? Vehicles. No, 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 not just the Camry. It was all vehicles changed. Even if a vehicle was like a carryover year to year, the, the mileage changed because the way they were doing the testing with the, the speed up and speed down... Um, to make it more of an even uh, playing field. But ever since then, I always have clients that tell me they're getting three to four miles per gallon better than, than what's, than what's right on the window. So I have so many Prius people that are telling me that they get anywhere from 58 to like 60. Wow. Um, even my own brother who has an older Prius, I sold him a, uh, a pre-owned like a couple years ago, it was a 2010 or 2011, and he was getting like 60 miles to the gallon. Wow. So I always thought it was really wild because the windows were like 55, 54, depending upon the year and depending upon the, the Prius. Um, so with this getting 52 for an average, 53 in the city and 52 on the highway, I would not be surprised if some people do some major commuting with it. It'd be in the upper 50s. You know, I really think it will be. There's just so much value at a price point where it is. That's amazing. That's a lot. That's a lot of fuel ago. And it has, it has some pretty good pickup there. I mean, it's not slow. Toyota's really starting to bridge that gap between, you know, the, 
the conventional four cylinder power and a six cylinder. They're, 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 I'm not saying these drive like six cylinders, I'm just saying they definitely feel more powerful than a regular four cylinder now. And that, that's super evident, uh, evident in the, like the Camrys. Like the Camry um, hybrid feels fast, feels really fast compared to even the four cylinder that's over 200 horsepower. The yeah. Hybrid feels real fast. And then, I see on the screen that it's switching and doing all these different things, but I can't feel the difference. You can run the electric motor and the engine at the same time, and you can't tell the difference. Other than that, it's just power. Hmm. And as the vehicle drives more and more and learns more about the driver um, and their input and their drive cycle, what kind of driving are they doing, it'll actually adapt to that. And that's where a lot of my Prius clients, not all of them, Get, you know, not that they get bad mileage, but not all of them get in that close to 60 or 60 range. Um, some of them get, you know, what the window sticker is. Some are a little bit more aggressive, and it might be one or two miles per gallon under that. Um, but there is a actual method of driving a Prius. Really? To squeeze out the mileage, and there's there's a bunch of different like things that are out there for people to see and research. But there is actually a quote unquote um, way to do it. And a lot of that is when you're, you know, coasting down, you know, just, just the kind of like the idea of how to make a fuel engine, you know, conventional fuel engine uh, more fuel efficient, you know, the way you drive, not being as hard on the gas, not being, yeah. you know, obviously there's those techniques, but it just, there's with, a bunch that are. With a hybrid, it probably amplifies all that. Exactly. That's where, you know, I, my brother lives in uh, the Charlotte area. Um, he's got, uh, I think, four restaurants now called Tavern on the Tracks. And his son goes to school um, in Tennessee. And they take that Prius from Charlotte to Tennessee and back. And then another week's worth of driving. Hmm. Wow. I mean, it's some real mileage that they go yeah. back and back and still drive the car without filling it up. Yeah, from here to Charlotte is what, 150 miles, something well, from, like that? No, well, I'm, I'm saying from Charlotte to Tennessee. Oh, to Tennessee. Wow. Yeah, that's the real crazy thing. Yeah. Yeah, 
But this is, uh, yeah, it's actually applying the brake, brakes and all that stuff. I was just kind of letting the adaptive cruise control control my speed here with, behind this truck. And um, we still have the cruise control set at 70. And um, we're definitely going about 55 now. Now he's out of the way, it's going to floor it probably. But um, I'll have to go ahead and cancel it so I can feel more comfortable. <laughs> um, and let's get over here. All right, so I'm gonna resume the 70 miles an hour <laughs> and see. So I guess the, the three bars aren't necessarily uh, car lengths, they're just like depending on how fast you're going. So I'm not, I'm not pushing the brake right now. I'm not pushing the brake. I got my foot right over top of the brake. It's actually slowing me down pretty good. So it'll come to a complete stop. Yep. Wait till the cars go. <laughs> I'm stopped and I'm not, I never touched the brake the whole time. Right. Now will it resume? Uh huh. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not gonna try to resist touching any pedal. I'm gonna just have my foot ready. It says push cruise control, switch to press. Resume. Resume. Okay. I don't know, but I push, um, I, I was supposed to push resume, I guess. Anyways, that was a failed test, but <laughs> I pushed the accelerator. So all I would have to do is push that, and then it would resume. Okay. It's basically asking, is that what you want to do? Like, are you just like a safety it? feature? Yeah. Okay. Pretty neat. Because all I did when I pushed that button is turn off the, the cruise control. So what are the perks of buying from Sparks Toyota versus another Toyota dealership? Well, you get a real big perk. Um, I mean, when we talk about value, is the lifetime powertrain warranty, which is accepted nationwide. So when you buy just new vehicle, new Toyotas new or Toyotas could be any of the Toyotas. Okay. Um, you get a lifetime powertrain. Um, so obviously the idea is that you know multiple reasons why you have a hybrid one. For the fuel savings, longevity, you know, reducing your carbon impact, um, but you know, a big part of it is to drive the vehicles and to hold on to them as long and put as many miles on them as you can, and that's where the benefits. The Synergy uh, hybrid warranty is an eight-year, uh, hundred thousand mile warranty on the batteries and the uh, the electric motors and those items, and you have the base warranty which is three years 36,000 miles the normal factory powertrain is five years 60,000 miles but like I said the addition is the lifetime powertrain that's pretty cool yeah plus you get Toyota care um, which comes with all of them and what's Toyota care the two years 25,000 miles of maintenance you get the roadside um, towing everything and this is all from Sparks. This isn't a. Well, this. Toyota cares with every Toyota. Okay. That's, that's a Toyota. So the uh, lifetime lifetime powertrain power is, is specifically. Is Toyota. Yeah. Plus you get discounts on parts and service. How's this look? Does this look? Am I lined up right? Yeah. As long as you don't hit the building or the other car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just like any other uh, client that I have. As long as we don't have new paint on the car, we're good. I used to be really good at lining up cars when I worked at the dealership, but I don't know if this is, it looks all right. It looks better, <laughs> better than nothing. So is there anything else you want to add? How, how can people contact you? Like another thing that you mentioned in the, in the other videos regarding the customized vehicles is that you can ship anywhere in the United States. Yep, we have third party shipping companies that can assist in shipping a vehicle anywhere from here to California. Um, 
So we can always help um, assist with that. Um, you can reach us here at sparkstoyota.com or you can contact me directly at 843-236-2161 and I'll be happy to help you with if it's something, a hybrid vehicle, a custom vehicle, or just any automotive sales. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Yep. All right, well, this has been a fun ride and um, on to the next vehicle. Awesome.